Okay, we do have to get started actually. It's time. So, but in return, in return, this is this is where I get something back from you, see. Uh, in return, you must email your TA if you are having problems specific to Carleton Auditorium. Must, must, required, 100%. If you come in next week and say, if my Wi-Fi is not working, then uh, you better have emailed your TA if it's a problem specific to Carleton Auditorium, and you better have already fixed it if it's a universal UF Wi-Fi problem. Understand? I'm not, I'm not trying to be me. I guess we got we got to make this happen. So, yes. Uh, it's whoever you're in lab with. So whoever you're in lab with is your TA. Yes. Number five. Let's see. All right. Uh, actually, no, I can't because some people haven't taken the quiz because they have to take it under different conditions. Uh, so I will be happy. Tell you what. Ask me that question again. I can go. I can go sit up. I'm talking to you. <laughs> Uh, ask me that question again next week and we can go over it, okay? Yeah. Okay, so... So that was, uh, that was fun. For some definition of fun. <laughs> okay. You have to listen to me talk now. I didn't draw this art. I'm not that good. Okay, so today we are um, going to get started. Let's see, I need to adjust these lights. Today we're going to start talking about uh, the process called selection, which is basically how, let's see, I can, no, well, whatever, good enough for now. Is that okay? All right, so uh, don't fall asleep, and if you do, don't snore, please. Um, so selection is a prospect process by which we pick different branches in a program based on input or based on something else. In our case, the first type of selection we're going to look at is what's called an if-else block. Right? We say, if something is true, do one thing, else, do something else. Uh, so that's what we mean when we say selection, is that we are picking between multiple courses of action. So the idea is that you know we have a program and we want to deal with multiple different uh, possible sets of data. So let's say we have a class called the number guessing game, and we are going to do the standard boilerplate like we always do. And you all know the scanner now. We're going to take some input from the user, and all right, sorry, we're going to create a scanner, and then we're going to say, uh, try to guess my number. What's your guess? And then we're going to read in a number from the user. And this is our first example of a selection process. It's, it's an if statement. If the guess equals 10, then we're going to spit out, wow, you must be psychic. In, other words, in, in any case, we're going to pronounce C later. So if basically lets us say, if something is true, then do the next line or block. We're going to talk about blocks in a minute. For now, you can think it's then do the next line. Uh, so you might notice that there's two equal signs here. Why do you think we use two equal signs instead of one? Yes? One is setting a number, that's comparing. Right, so the answer that he gave was one is setting a number and the other is comparing. Right, so when we want to compare two numbers, we have to use a double equals. So a single equal sign means you're setting a number to some value. You're setting some variable or something, or something along those lines to some value. Uh, if you use the double equal, it means you're comparing them. So when you do guess double equal 10, this is going to return a truth value. It's either going to return true or it's going to return false. So let's take the first case. We say, try to guess my number. What's your guess? If I type in 10, then it's going to say, if gets equals 10, well, in this case, it does equal 10. So that's going to be true. So if it's true, then we're going to print out, wow, you must be psychic. And then in either case, we're going to print out, see you later. On the other hand, if we say, try to guess my number, and I type in 5, it's not going to print that line about being psychic. It's just going to say, see you later. Make sense? 
Okay, any questions so far? All right, and also I'm blind, so if you do have your hand up, you may have to flail it wildly. Yes? What would happen if you wanted to compare to the other? What would happen? Oh, that's a really good question, and we are, if we have time, we're going to get to that today. So we are going to talk about it. Yes, the question was, how, what happens if we try to compare two doubles? I'm glad you asked that, because I have a slide dedicated to that particular question. It's complicated is the short version of that. Yes, sir? Are we allowed to compare strings for equality? The question was, can we compare two strings, two sets of characters, to see if they're equal? And the answer is yes. Uh, different languages have different ways of doing that accurately. Java, you, you can actually just use, actually, I have to double check that. I think you can double check. No, 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 no. actually, I think for Java, you have to use the dot equals function. Uh, because it won't just compare the references. That'll fail. Unless they are the same address in memory. Good question. Yes? Um, can you compare like, an int and a double? The question was, can you compare an int and a double? And the answer is yes, with a little asterisk, that doubles have some special unique problems, and that they are precise, but sometimes inaccurate, which is a weird thing to say, but we're going to get into the details of it later. So the answer is yes, but be careful. And we're going to talk about exactly why you have to be careful soon. Cool? Yes, sir. Okay, so somebody said the single equal is to assign a value, the double equal is to compare, and then the next question was, what's a triple equal? And the answer is the triple equal sign does not exist in Java, thank God. Um, the triple equal sign does exist in JavaScript, which is a totally different language, and also JavaScript is the devil. So, um, if you were wondering. I say that having written a lot of JavaScript. So if you like, are in love with JavaScript, I'm not trying to insult you, I just think you have really terrible taste. So, um, but that's okay, you can have bad taste. I certainly do. Have you heard my jokes? They're awful. Um, okay, so, uh, Another thing we can do with if statements is we can actually, instead of just doing a single instruction, we can actually have it execute a block of instruction as, if something is true. So let's say that we wanted to use the math random function. In this case, uh, we're going to get a, a number for a universe where we're going to pull a random number. Remember, math.random gives us a number between 0 and 1, some kind of uh, fractional number between 0 and 1, and then we're going to multiply it by 500. So that will give us a number between 0 and 500. Yes, sir? Uh, for the test, do we get all the math functions, or do we have to memorize them? So the question was, if we have a test or a quiz or an exam, I'm paraphrasing, uh, do we have to memorize all of the math API functions? And the answer is no, you do not have to memorize all of the math API functions. Um, I, you know, it, you should be familiar with them, but if we need you to use something, we're going to give it to you. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, so we, we're pulling a random number between 0 and 1, we're multiplying it by 500, that'll give us a random number between 0 and 500, right? Then we're rounding it off using the math.round function, which will give us a whole number between 0 and 500. So that's going to be our universe number. <clears throat> and then, excuse me. Um, and then we're going to check to see if, um, and I obviously have a typo here, that's supposed to say universe, I'll fix it later. Uh, if the universe is greater than 300, then we're going to print out one set of information, and otherwise, in any case, we're going to print out something else. So here we have a block. We have a block where we have an open brace and a closed brace. And when we follow an if statement by an open and closed brace block, it will execute everything inside of that block if that statement is true. So not just the first print statement, but also the second print statement. So in this case, it's going to say, uh, we found C, whatever the number is, and then it's going to print out time to get you with the, and yes, they're terrible brick and mortar jokes if you haven't realized that yet. These are all real universe numbers, by the way. I went through the Rick and Morty uh, Wikipedia article and found all the different universes for this, these lecture slides. So I want you to know that I care, OK? <laughs> <laughs> um, and in any case, it's going to print time to get going. So if, 
it's less than 300, it's going to print that first set of information. If it's not, it's just going to print time to get going. It's just going to print the other half. Everybody good so far? Yes. Oh, good question. The question is, why did I make universe a long type instead of like an int or something like that? The short version is that math.round returns a long, and I didn't want to add a bunch of extra code around it. So that's the only reason I did that. But, you know, hypothetically, it could have been an int just as easily because it's a small number. Does that answer your question? Okay. Anyone else? Yes, wave your hand in the back. Yes, so I'm going to repeat your question, but the answer is yes. So the question was, if the number is not greater than 300, to be clear, if it was equal to or less than 300, then it is not going to execute the instructions in the block here. So anytime that this condition is not met, anytime this condition is false, those instructions do not get executed. Everything outside of the block does, but nothing inside the block. Does that answer your question? Okay, yes? Um, when you said the if statement, where did you get the word my number? Oh, uh, that's a typo. It should have said universe. It's a copy and paste error. Sorry. Yeah, it should say universe. All right, anyone else? I will fix it before I post them. Yes? No, many, the question was, is math.round the only one that returns uh, long? The answer is unfortunately not. There are many functions that return long, and when they return long, you either have to convert that type or you have to just put it into a long type. So uh, we are going to talk, talk, we might get it today. I don't know if we're going to get to it, but if we don't, then uh, we'll talk about it later. But you can convert between types. I haven't been doing that in these slides just because I don't want to overload folks when they're getting started. But yeah, um, so. I guess to actually answer your question, yes, there are many other functions that also return long. This is just one of them. Yes, in the back. The question was, does math.round round to the nearest whole number? And the answer is yes. Yes, it does. So this is not the same as truncation, which we talked about before. When you do division with integers, it truncates the number. Um, this, is, this is different. This is not truncation. This is actually rounding. Okay, so uh, th these are the different operators we can use to compare numbers and types. Uh, obviously, there is less than, we have greater than, uh, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, equal to, and not equal to. So they're just like they sound, right? Um, they're just different comparators that we can use, and they all have different true-false values depending on the numbers we put on either side. So this is like basic fundamental math. Um, so you, you know, now be careful because it's greater than or equal to, not equal or greater than. You can't transpose these double symbol one. Well, I mean, obviously the double equals you can, but the rest of them you cannot transpose the characters. You can't flip them. If you flip them, it won't work. So make sure you do less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and not equal. Don't do. Um, don't do the flip. Yes? Oh, God, did I mess it up again? Seven greater than equal to. Yeah, and, and I, well, you guys know I can't do math. We, I, I think we've established this. Uh, yeah, it's another mistake. I got I to proofread these. Maybe, maybe I should hire somebody to be a proofreader. If you want to proofread my slides for you, let me know after class. That, that's why I have TAs. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. maybe I'll make you guys do it. That's what I'll do. I'll send it to you like three minutes before class starts. Like, hey, fix this for me. All right. I'm going to forget this. I'm just going to fix it now. All right. So yes, 7 is in fact greater than or equal to 6. So that should be true. OK. Any other questions? Man, that's two in one period. Oh. Okay. So these are uh, the comparators we can use. Another thing we can do is we can have um, if-else blocks. 
which means that we can say if something is true, then function a certain way. Otherwise, do something else. So, um, so in this case, we could say if the number I, I, that typo is on both of these slides. Uh, I can say if uh, the universe number is greater than 300, then I'm going to print out the universe number and say time to get swifty. And otherwise, otherwise, if something else is true in this case, and I realize I'm missing a case here, um, if the universe number is 187, then say, oh, we ended up at 187. And otherwise, say, well, at least we're not at C187. Um, in this particular example, uh, what we're looking at is a chain of if-else statements. So basically, you can combine an if with an else. And you can say, if something is true, do this thing. Else, do this other thing. You can also create a sequence of if-else statements where you have, if something is true, do that thing. Else, if something else is true, do this other thing. Else, do something else. Right? And this lets us deal with a bunch of different possible sequences of actions. Yes, sir? How many uh, ifs or else ifs statements can you have? The question was, how many ifs or else if statements can you have? And the answer is, as many as the computer memory will hold. So you can have an infinite number if you want. There's no limit. Does that answer your question? Yes. If we're not using brackets to create a statement block, uh, mm -hmm. what is it that determines what the next statement is? Is it just the next statement that ends in a semicolon, no matter how far down the page that is? The question was, I'm going to rephrase your question. The question was, if we don't have the curly braces to define a block, what is it that defines the statement that goes with the if or the else or the else if? And the answer is, it's always the next statement no matter how far down the page it is, no matter how many spaces there are, no matter how many tabs, it's always the very next statement is the statement associated with that if or else or else if. Does that answer your question? All right, anyone else? Yes? Well, why did you use else if? Could you just use two if statements or you have to do an if and then everything else after is else if? Uh, the question was, wh uh, why did I use else if, why didn't I just use another if? That was the question, right? Yep. And the answer is, uh, sometimes you can do that. Um, I actually probably could have in this case, but um, it's a subtle difference. So let's say, for example, let's say I got rid of this else, okay? And it was just if number equals 187 else, at least we're not in C187. That changes the behavior because then these are broken up. These are no longer connected if I just have an if here. Because then, if I print out this stuff, and this is just if this, else this, then it's going to print out this stuff, and then it's actually going to print out this line also, because this would be the, the else for our new block. I may have to like actually edit this in code to show you specifically what would happen, but, um, but it changes the behavior. That's, that's the short answer. But if you want me to go through an example afterwards, just let me know, okay? Anyone else? Okay, so and then in this last case, it's at least it says at least we're not in C187. Uh, let's see. Uh, wait, wait, wave your hand vigorously because I can't see. You. Oh yes. Uh, the question was. Uh, can I put an if inside of another if? And then I heard somebody say something about JavaScript, which is totally not the language we're learning. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just giving you grief. So in Java, the question was, can you put an if inside of another if? And the answer is, it's gl I'm glad you asked that, because that's what we're going to talk about next. It's called nesting, and yes, you definitely can do it. So um, when we nest if-else blocks inside of other if-else blocks, it means they're contained inside of the other ones. So, God, did I make this mistake again? All of these slides. Uh, uh, so let's say we said, uh, if my number is greater than 300, then I'm going to print out you know, uh, the universe number 